Hello friends, this is Odds. I've recently hired someone to write my biography and it's coming out very soon, so check that out. It's definitely me. And today we're going to talk about the Dead by Daylight community and the state that it's in. If you've interacted with it lately, you know that things are stormy. Uh, first, we had the new chapter, Tools of Torment, releasing a killer that most people thought was uninteresting and uninspired and very weak. But from the PTB to the live release, she got a hefty buff. And now she's in a very strange limbo where she's not good enough to beat survivors in chase and consistently outplay them. But she is very good at just playing the long game and holding three gens down. I've seen very, very good survivors be completely unable to break her three gens for very extended periods of time. Uh, me and my friends had a 43 minute game against a skull merchant and we ended up all just bleeding on the ground eventually uh, very strong competitive teams have tried to break three gens on this killer and even the best teams struggle to do it in less than 15 minutes which is unheard of and i would say almost unprecedented in this game she is definitely troubled and needs some kind of rework and until this happens you're probably going to have a lot of boring games it seems like her biggest power really is to just make people quit and I've never seen people give up faster than against this killer. Uh, either way, on top of that, we've also had a resurfacing of the DDoS problems. Now, a DDoS in this context is basically an attack that makes your internet just completely explode. Imagine that you have a phone and instead of receiving a normal call, you receive a million calls at once and it crashes the line. That's basically what happens. Our understanding is limited, but essentially what we think is happening is that some bad actor is using the Steam framework somehow to find your IP through Dead by Daylight and then use that IP to, you know, do their thing and overload your internet, making it impossible to stream. This has happened to me. This has happened to several other streamers. And funnily enough, it sometimes even happens to the players in the streamers' lobbies. So this is something that will affect even non-streamers sometimes. Uh, so far, playing on Epic Games seems to have ameliorated the situation on top of using VPNs and all the other stuff, uh, but it is a bit concerning that we're here still. Uh, I have to say, though, kudos to Behavior. Right after the weekend, the first day, the first minute they could, they made, an, they made a statement, and they've also reached out to try to get information from us to be able to deal with this better. So I appreciate that, uh, but obviously, if all these good intentions lead to us still having to have this issue months and months, this out of the happen last year. It is it is quite sad. And I know for some streamers, it is quite scary. It is very, very scary that their private information is out there in some way. On top of this new development and this new form of toxicity, we have obviously the old toxicity. Uh, I get as many comments as I ever have about people tunneling, camping, bleeding people on the ground, playing in rude, uh, ways um, as a bit of a personal example uh, not too long ago I played a game where I tried to rescue a I think it was a, a Junjin that was being camped she went down so quickly after that that I didn't even get my deliverance and somehow I managed to rescue her after that and instead of running away she just teabagged the killer uh, which of course meant that eventually she got tunneled out and then the killer caught me and that would have been two kills but I got lucky and I escaped the hook, and I got out, and the killer only got one kill. And at the end of this, uh, I had one of the saddest endgame chats I've ever seen in my life. The survivor that died flamed the killer and made fun of him. The killer complained about everyone, and it was just a back and forth, a back and forth, a back and forth of just insults and, and blaming and so on. And it really made me sad. But, of course, this is just... Uh, very anecdotal. Take it as you will. This has always been part of this game. It will always be part of this game. It will be part of any other game, really. Uh, it's really, really hard to root it out. Uh, one thing that seems to be a bit of a new development, though, is a new way to BM, to bad manner. Uh, and it is the humping. There's this really stupid trend <laughs> where killers will leave you on the ground and go back and forth on top of you as if they were having uh, relationships with you. And I, I don't even know what to say. This is one of the dumbest, cringiest things I've ever seen in my life. And it's so, so dumb. And it reminds me of the people that are like, oh, please remove the control so people can't debug. It doesn't matter. People will find new creative ways to BM, to, to, to be rude, no matter how many things you change. So yeah, uh, any and all of these things that I talked about uh, are really, really sad. But sometimes you would just see those negative things and forget about some other 
amazing, amazing things that have happened recently in the community. And I think those things don't get enough of a spotlight. So I'm going to talk about them right now. Let's talk about some amazing things that have happened in the DPD community. Uh, for example, uh, a few months ago, a person by the name of, let me make sure I get it right. That's right. Uh, a person by the name of Samuel Cold made isometric illustrations for every map in Dead by Daylight. And these are available in a Steam guide that I'll be linking in the description. Everything I talk about this video will be linked in the description. And they are super, super cool. They're not extremely accurate and, and super precise for like competitive play, but this is awesome if you want to learn the maps in a nice visual way, or if you want to share it with your friends so that if you play together, you can more or less communicate where you are in a relatively simple manner. I love this thing, more cool stuff like that. I really, really like it. Someone else that has been putting out an amazing, amazing uh, series of, of videos for years now for the community is Interact. Interact makes new videos whenever each killer comes out and they break down the add-ons, their playstyle, recommend some builds, talk about the ins and outs of their power. If you're not the type of person to read through wikis and, and, and carefully analyze everything, watching these videos is honestly incredible. And the thing you need to realize is that, is that in the past, Dead by Daylight did not have accurate descriptions of the add-ons. Instead of telling you that they did one, two, three percent, they told you tremendously, moderately, slightly whatever and it was really really hard to understand what each thing did interact back in the day went through the trouble of data mining the game or having someone data mine the game so that they could tell you exactly uh, what each thing did and i really think these videos are amazing and a really cool thing that you should check out uh maybe he will put out a new video for this cool merchant soon go check out his channel another person that has put out a really interesting video that is not getting nearly as much attention as it should is the player Excise. This is a, I believe it's a Russian competitive player who is very well known for being, you know, incredible at the game. And they put out a video explaining check spots. Check spots are little locations that you look at during chase to help you determine where the killer is coming and what you should do next. And they explain these in such a useful way. And this is a very short video uh, an intermediate level that is super, super useful. And I learned a lot watching it. I wish you would watch it too. And I think that they hinted that they could make a beginner friendly video based on this. Maybe you could leave a comment and tell them to leave, uh, to make a, a, a beginner friendly video so that they do more stuff like that. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, staying in the comp scene, uh, here's a little footage of a showcase that me and Hans are working on. This is Team Eternal using head on in the beginning of a match to delay the killer. And believe it or not, apparently head-on is becoming a very popular perk in competitive DVD. Uh, I've seen some examples before, but apparently it's, it's making a bit of a comeback. And you have to see what happened in an American match hosted by Champions of the Fog. I was watching this and it blew my mind. So we have an artist playing against a really, really strong American team. Uh, one of the survivors gets unhooked. The artist is doing pretty well. Obviously, they want to tunnel that person out, get them out of the game. And they're chasing this Nancy around this TNL wall. And Nancy makes a bit of a strange play here, right? And I'm like, ooh, what, what is this? Does she have off the record? Is she just trying to, to just tank the hit and go away? But the killer at this moment identified the exact strategy that this team was following. There is someone in that locker with head on. But instead of running in front of it or trying to fake it out... What the killer did was genius. They went left to pretend that they were not going in front of it, and then immediately went around and grabbed them before they could react to get the person out of the locker. What a read. I thought that was amazing. And if you want to dip your toes into competitive DVD, now is honestly one of the best times ever. The DVD community cups are happening uh, every month or so. They are an open cups where you can play with friends in a co somewhat competitive setting. There's some insane team, uh, teams there. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I participated and played against some really good people in these. Uh, but if you're still a bit of a beginner, there is another option that I also think is amazing, which is to participate in Otofu's Scrim Nights. Uh, Otofu is a long, long friend of, of my channel. He's, a, he's an amazing streamer uh, from North America. And he's hosting weekly nights where he invites people that are maybe not quite at the highest competitive level to play in a semi-competitive way. And it's a great way to watch people um, unfold their skills and to try yourself against, uh, against a team that is not exactly a random bunch of solo queue players, right? Uh, I really, really, I really, really appreciate what Tofu's doing. And you should definitely watch if you have a moment. Uh, talking about another content creator that I'm a big fan of, 
Choi is a content creator that in the past has highlighted uh, lots of community content through highlights, has also made very insightful videos and analysis. I like their content a lot. And recently on Twitter, they announced that they had been diagnosed with leukemia, which is a type of blood cancer. Uh, I don't really know what this means for their content. It would be probably a good thing if they took a bit of a break. But it was honestly amazing to see that the community took a lot of their energy to show love and show support to Choi. And I think it would be amazing also if you, again, check the description, find this and give Choi a subscription. Give them a nice message on Twitter. You know, let them know that they are loved, that they are remembered, that they are appreciated and that they have all the support in the world to go through that. And another thing that blew my mind that I had no idea about, have you guys checked the DVD wiki? Have you ever noticed that the DVD wiki has some really cool icons that you don't really see in the game? Now, like anyone else, I assume that these icons were from DVD Mobile or maybe they were inside files in the game that just don't show up unless you're in certain tutorials. And I thought, wow, these are really cool. I'm maybe going to use them in a video or two. But it turns out that the DVD wiki has been commissioning an artist to draw icons specifically for the wiki. And I thought that was awesome. And the artist they've commissioned, maybe among others, is Withdraws. And Withdraws has made like a million different custom icons, uh, which by the way, I think are free to download, download in, in many of their socials. Again, everything is in the description. And honestly, I, I thought it was mind blowing that we have such a powerful wiki that they can afford and, and they have the drive to to hire someone to make cool icons for the game. And honestly, I will probably be looking to commission this person to make some cool custom things. And I think once their commissions are open in the future, you might want to do the same. Uh, anyway, uh, that's what I can remember uh, happening in the community lately. That has put a smile on my face. If there's something else that has happened in the DVD community lately that puts a smile on your face, please share it with me and with everyone else so that we can talk about that and put the spotlight on that instead of just talking about negative things, which honestly lately have really, really, really uh, hit me like a sack of bricks. Uh, that was all for me, and I'll see you tomorrow with some other dumbass video. Bye-bye. <laughs>